it's Tuesday, and that means today is time for Tuesdays with Ted. And I'm so happy that you're joining us. My name is Floyd Pönitz, president of SDA Kinship International. And today, I'm not alone on the screen. I have two very special guests with me that I am just very pleased that they agreed to uh, to join me for this episode of Tuesdays with Ted. And those guests are John and Carolyn Wilt. Welcome to the podcast here. Thank you for inviting us. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to ask you in just a little bit, you know, just a brief summary of who you are and uh, where you are, et cetera, things like that. But before we get into that, my normal thing is to put the video on pause, grab your, your drink, which my camera is not focusing on right now or whatever, and uh, your favorite beverage. And uh, let's let's talk. Uh, this is a time when we can share some information with Ted Wilson, president of the Seventh-day Adventist uh, General Conference, and uh, we're talking about homosexuality and how it affects um, us individually as well as other people. And the other people is where John and Carolyn come in, and they are the uh, the directors of our families and friends uh, department or uh, portion of SDA kinship. And uh, so tell us, John and Carolyn, uh, just a little bit about how and why you're involved with kinship and also where you're located. Well, we're, we're located in Northern California, a few miles uh, east of Sacramento. Um, and we are delighted to be a part of kinship from the families and friends uh, side of, of activities uh, for every rainbow. And, and we like the term rainbow, Floyd, um, because we are all rainbows, uh, I, whether our hair color, our left-handed, right-handed. Uh, rainbow is a gorgeous term because it's all the colors of light. Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful. A beautiful rainbow is uh, energizing to me. So we like to talk about families with rainbow members. And we had a gay son. Uh, okay. Many years ago, uh, he did come out. We helped him out of the closet. But for 10 years, he tried to start telling us at age 15 that he was gay. We were, we were naive. We didn't understand what that meant. And it took us 10 years before we really gathered enough information. He was just hinting. Yeah. And we didn't catch the hint. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Looking back, those 10 years, we're disappointed because once we understood it and we did some research and got some new knowledge, and I'm a well-educated person. Carolyn is a very intelligent lady, but we were naive. And I, I use that term for all of us, and that includes Ted, it includes his staff, that includes all of our leaders of our faith. Um, it's okay to be naive. It's just we hope you will be open to the idea of learning new things and maybe adjusting um, thoughts and feelings and emotions and decisions. So we then, uh, once we found, uh, we pulled Eric out of his closet. Um, Carolyn, you have a favorite saying about that. Yes. Um, when we learned that he was gay, I wanted to talk to the pastor. So he came over to the house and he asked me, what is your biggest concern? Mm -hmm. And he said, is it, do you think it was your fault maybe or dad's fault because he wasn't around a lot? And I said, no, my biggest concern is how our friends and his friends will be towards him once they find out he's gay. Mm -hmm. I yeah. had no problem with it, but I was concerned because everybody loved him. And I thought, uh-oh, he's not going to be loved anymore. Right. But that's far from the truth. Everybody still did love him. Oh, that, sure. that pastor knew him from when he was little. And when Eric came in and he brought his friends home and his partners home from New York, when he, Eric lived in New York, he got a hug from that pastor. And he got mm. a welcome. Uh, so we've been very fortunate from that viewpoint. But also there's another little saying that we have that when um, when a person comes out of the closet to his family, the family goes into the closet. Right. They right. don't have, who do they go to? Who can they talk to? Who can they connect with to start to learn? And, and 
it took us 10 years. It's not immediate. And I fully respect the education and the knowledge that our leaders of the faith have, but I just hope they'll be open to the concept and the and the bruises that they are causing to families in our faith, not yeah. just the person, but to families. Um, and this is the thing we want to chat about because when if if your son or daughter, and it, and it doesn't have to be a son or daughter, it could be a grandchild, it could be a niece, a nephew, an aunt, right. uncle, it could be a brother or sister, it could be a husband or wife. Yeah, it, it's true. Sure. It's there's strong good evidence that. Over half the families in the world have a rainbow member somewhere in the family. And re repeat that again, because I think that's a very point that, you know, Ted talks a lot about the LGBTQ or the rainbow uh, uh, individuals, but very rarely does he talk about the actual families that are attached to each and every one of them in the church. So, how I mean, how many do you think have... Well, we have several different data points. We're, we're aware of several pastors that have asked their Sabbath school classes over the last few years. It's not official, but they've said, how many of you have a rainbow person in your family? Uh, one pastor had said 42% of his class. One said 43%. Mm. Another one said 45%. Yeah. We assume, okay, that sounds reasonable. Probably 5 to 10% don't know, like we. They were naive. Mm -hmm. Another five to ten percent may know, but they're not going to admit it. They don't understand. So we're comfortable that fifty-five to sixty percent. And then twenty-three and me did a research project a couple of years ago on over four hundred and eighty-eight thousand um, DNA analyses that they came that they do around the world, and they came up with fifty-nine percent of the families wow. have a rainbow person dna in the family mm -hmm. so it's mm -hmm. just not a five percent or ten percent uh, mm -hmm. and, and as we work with pastors in their and their, in their families and and employees in their families um we're the only people they can talk to safely uh and and learn and start to understand it's you, you know unfortunately our rainbow members have known for years they they have slowly adjusted and, and tried to help their families. A family has 30 seconds to say, wow, uh, you're what? Uh, why? Uh, I did with Eric. I mean, he would have been a wonderful husband. He tried to get married. He wanted to be married. Mm -hmm. His emotions and his sexuality prevented him from really, well, he said, I don't want to lie to them. He tried to marry two different ladies and it just, he said that it didn't work. Um, and we hopefully we had a wonderful connection, so we talked about a lot of neat things that way. Let me let me ask you a, a question here that just came to mind. Uh, you know, hopefully I don't throw you off with the question, but um, you know, you, you're talking about the thirty seconds of of deciding: Am I going to accept or not accept my my child, my loved one, or whatever? And you know, for someone who doesn't know a gay person and when they're coming out I can understand because they haven't lived with that person they don't know that person personally so it might be hard to accept or whatever that person but like a child for example you've lived with that child you know that child for 15 18 25 years or whatever um you may have an idea you may not we always say moms have an idea whether that's true or not uh in all cases we don't know but what is the thing when that child comes out to you and tells you this that makes a parent reject that child so quickly sometimes you know within 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 the adventist church especially because that's our context that we're talking about here the adventist church um you know are, is that something that we we're taught or or why why do parents why do loved ones reject and that's the fear of the the queer person coming out they don't want to tell their parents or their their family because they're afraid of that rejection and a lot of times that happens we i hear lots of stories about uh people coming out and their families have rejected them what is in our dna that even though we know that person we love that person they're a good person for all these years they say those words, hey, mom, hey, dad, I think I'm gay. What 
what changes in that in those 10 seconds when the, when those words are said i think two things are challenged one is our own internal our brains that this little beast up here is the most complicated computer in the world that's where our emotions and our feelings are mm -hmm. i naturally was am heterosexual i naturally uh, was a was interested in in an opposite sex person so when eric did when he came out to us and when we work with other people i have to i had to learn to shift that his brain unfortunately mm -hmm. was wired different than mine mm -hmm. now fortunately 25 or so years ago we met arlene taylor uh he she's a double do doctor nurse here in the west coast and her specialty was how the brain functions and arlene shared with us and she shares it in many of her presentations it appears and unfortunately you can't how to how the brain really forms is guesswork uh, we true. can't yeah. go in and watch it like a heart or a kidney or a liver but her her professional world says it appears sex, the sexuality and sexual attraction part of our brain probably forms in the 12th to 16th week of gestation just the second and third month of gestation that wiring of of emotion and and a, and a what your body what you are attracted to is wired in very early mm -hmm. so um I, I think i had to learn that and that was my brain said wow I, I don't i didn't understand that but i'm willing i'm a i'm a retired scientist so i'm used to changing my brain and thinking because of all new influence then the second part of that is beside my own personal response and, and carolyn's response is what we were taught and all of us were taught by parents to begin with and grandparents loving people uh pastors if you went to church schools you were taught by very genuine people but they were passing on what they believed and what they were taught and mm -hmm. even and ted and, and and your people you strongly believe i understand and, and i i respect your knowledge what you've been taught the problem is that we've also unfortunately in the church side i think you've been taught that anybody that tries to change what you've been taught is is sinful it, it's that's wrong as a scientist <laughs> i i you know i i was i worked my way through school as a, as an engineer and my i had professors that i worked with when we were doing research on broken parts in a rocket engine and i had these doctors who'd written textbooks say i've never seen that before we're going to have to research it and learn new stuff Mm -hmm. and i and i so i think those two pieces um moms and dads brothers and sisters and so you you respond you respond to how you were taught and it really it's 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 a it, you have to learn to be able to adjust it and be comfortable with a new outlook yeah yeah so i it's sounding like ted mark finley etc coming out ministries all those people need to take another look at it because you're talking about science and you know we're we know a whole lot more today than we did 10 years ago or even last year mm -hmm. uh science has has uh, knowledge has increased and science has become clearer um so you know what is the what is your thinking on is it a choice because so many people say well you see it on tv and you want to emulate these rock stars or pop stars and so you know you choose to be gay you choose to be trans or or whatever what is your feeling on that it's your something that you're born with it's not a choice at all it's yeah. like in, in look like a person you have a um were born with half an arm was that a choice no they were born that way you're born autistic is that a choice um why would somebody choose to be rejected and when did i decide to become heterosexual yeah i didn't I, make that decision i was born that way right 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 exactly exactly and i think another little piece there in that direction too is we seem to get focused too quickly on the sexuality side of it rather than the taking care of each other side human beings 
need partners. We need supporters. We weren't born to be individuals all by ourselves. And mm -hmm. why having, I just read some other articles recently, but the, we're so focused on a five minute or a 30 minute once a month kind of thing, rather than the hours we spend taking care of each other, supporting each other, loving each other, helping each other through, through life. Um, what, what, why, why do we want to stop that? Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, you know, what, what do you guys as, as part of kinship, SDA kinship, what can you offer parents who are struggling with this and, and saying, I really, you know, I have to go in the closet. I don't have anyone I can talk with. My elder, my pastor wouldn't understand uh, me or my, my loved one. Uh, you know, what, what do you offer for them or what, what kind of hope and uh, just, yeah, what, what's available for them? Um, a lot of life that we have experienced as ourselves. We are available to anybody that would like to connect with us. Uh, go, go to the kinship page. You will find our little video that shares our story, our desire that families, we need to work together, work together and be available. We are very safe to talk with and we, we don't take... Um, we're not going to tell anybody about it. We have pastoral folks that do reach out to us because we can share our information. They themselves have to then walk the path. They have to learn. We're not going to tell them what's right or wrong because each one of us sees life from a little bit different viewpoint. We also have a third Sunday of every month. We do a Zoom call for parents and friends of gay and lesbian. Mm -hmm. and all, all the letters all, all the all the, yeah. all the rainbow all, yeah okay and yeah. that's that's an open discussion that people can join yeah absolutely <laughs> again go to the kinship page and you will find the link but the, the third sunday every month at 9 30 california time um mm -hmm. and we're even willing and happy to try to do a different one for australia and new zealand time they're interested i think in that but it's just an it's it's interesting how if we connect with each other, um, that folks we know folks that have gotten together then outside the call that's fine, that's what we want. We need to help each other walk through this world, this this real life, uh, and it would be nice if we had a church that we could walk through with. In all honesty, if our faith could just open their arms, um, I know of some churches that are that way. It's very safe to, to everybody's welcome. And it's so neat to see families helping each other. Um, I can't walk in your shoes. I can walk beside you. Right. And right. that's what we try to do. We try to walk beside people. We can email. Uh, we got, uh, we are happy to call on telephone. We'll chat with you. Um, we're limited in English, unfortunately. Um, but we'll still figure out a way. Uh, to, to communicate, but that's how uh, we and kinship. We also have some articles that we write uh, on different topics every month. If they go into the backside of the of the web page, I know we're redeveloping our web page, so mm -hmm. wherever they are. But each of those articles has a a seed or two that's being planted for people to think about. Um, you know, emotional health. How do I make it? How do I adjust? Is it safe? Uh, right. How do right. I learn? You know, one of my favorite sayings is, how do I know what I don't know? Yeah. And today, how do I know what I know is even true and honest uh, with all the fake news? You know, in the old days, we used to get letters back and forth. Today, unfortunately, <laughs> we can get something in two milliseconds from one place <laughs> to another. Yeah, yeah. Time, times are changing. And uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. I see that you guys are wearing the same button that I have yep. on the same pin here. So I'm just wondering, what is the importance of wearing something like this and, you know, going hand in hand with why is it important to actually connect with SDA kinship and with other parents? Uh, why is it important to build that community? Um, if you could just say a couple of words before we close on that. Well, it, it's interesting. People ask me, oh, well, what, what's that pin? What's it for? And I honestly and admit, quickly admit, oh, we had a gay son. And we're we're part of helping families uh, understand. And we are, honestly, we're more than just Adventist families. This is any family. 
uh, we don't care. Your, your husbands and wives, your moms and dads, your aunts and uncles, your grandparents. And it's amazing, almost, I would guess, 60 to 70% of the time, people, oh, I have a gay niece, I have a gay son, I have a transgender daughter. Um, I'd love to talk to you. And, and we end up chatting with them and meeting with them and connecting them to other families that are going through the same struggle, uh, the same challenge, the struggle is not a, well, it is a struggle, but it's, it, it's- For some, it's more, it's, it's more of a struggle. Yeah, it's- Right, right. And we understand that, and, and we understand that leaders of the faith we understand exactly where you're where you are and we're just i wish and i hope you're we're in, we invite you to chat with us and let's quietly consider new ideas that are legitimate ideas and and, and real physiological and mental honesties mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it's complex I, I understand and it's emotionally complex should anyone ever be embarrassed to having a, a rainbow family member and admitting it? Should there I should anyone be embarrassed about that? I no. hope not. It, it's 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 real, and it's it's just not a problem, honestly. Um, so it, it, it's a challenge, we, and we understand that. Because you know, Ted had uh, has gay family members as well. We understand so, that. I don't have I don't hear him talking about that very much, uh, but uh, but that's a reality. And I know uh, dozens, actually, and literally of Adventist pastors and church leaders, GC people who have rainbow family members. And uh, we want to create and foster uh, an environment where people can openly talk about that mm -hmm. and express their concerns, because, sure, it's OK to have concerns and and have questions. But um you know, you guys are there to help navigate that and and have people, um, yeah, find answers and explore answers to those questions. Well, and um, I think one other point just to make in that is that we often turn to the Bible for the answer. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when my dentist works on my teeth, he doesn't look at the Bible for how to fix my teeth. And when they did surgery on Carolyn's knees, he didn't use a Bible to how do you put replace a knee. Uh, last year, we were at a, another Adventist church for, for a service, and that pastor, I thought, shared a beautiful statement. And his statement was that the Bible is not a textbook. It is not an engineering report. It is not a scientific study. Hmm. It's a message. It's a message of how we're to live our lives. And 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago, they didn't have the Internet. They didn't have the knowledge we have today. But the message that I keep seeing from the Jesus and the New Testament part is to love people, accept each other, help each other. And and that to me, I, I thought, wow, that, that's a beautiful statement. The mess the Bible is a message. And what we need today is to find the message for today, for today's families. For today's I like that. Families. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's a beautiful analogy and that's very true. Um just in closing here. Do you have any final thoughts for Ted, since this is a video for Ted in the general conference, anything you would uh, encourage uh, and want him to, to uh, think about? And I would like you to close with the famous line that you're always doing for, for almost every letter or thing that you write. And uh, then I'll say a few closing words. Yeah, I think the final little that we need to go into much deeper some other time. But last year, the United States General uh, Surgeon General came out with a very, very, very valuable study on depression and what things can cause families and people to be depressed, which has major impact on their health. Now, as our faith is extremely focused on good health, don't smoke, don't drink, don't eat this, don't eat that kind of thing. And the thing that caught my attention immediately was in the surgeons, for the, in the studies that they've done, being depressed is worse than smoking 15 cigarettes a day mm. or drinking six glasses of alcohol. And yet when a family is rejected because of a decision made by us humans and, and all of us, we cause depression. We cause orphan. They become orphans. The family becomes orphans. So the things we're doing today, in addition to is it right or wrong, we could be causing bad health for our families, physical health, suicidal kinds of things. 
-hmm. And that's, I think, an area that we really have not turned that stone over among all of us as a faith. How, how valuable is it to be, to not cause depression, to accept people and help them from becoming ill? So yeah. I think that's a, a major area that uh, the church folks, the decisions you're making, you could be causing suicides. You could be mm -hmm. causing illnesses that we don't even understand. Exactly. And our little statement that we've always liked, and we're fans of Southern Gospel, I was driving down the road one day and I heard a song. The chorus, though, caught my eye. And the chorus was, Jesus never looked the other way, and neither should I. So we or say neither to neither should we. And neither should we. So Jesus never looked the other way, and neither should we. Wow. And kinship that's, doesn't look the other way. That's beautiful. Beautiful. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. John and Carolyn, thank you for being with uh, with me today. So I'm not alone on the Tuesdays with Ted and sharing your thoughts. And uh, I just hope that um, everyone watching, whether you're an LGBTQ rainbow person or the family member of one, the loved one, the person sitting in the pew next to one on Sabbath morning, um, think about Think about your relationship with that person and please connect with SDA Kinship. John and Carolyn would love to talk with you and uh, hear your journey and uh, and join them on the roundtable for the Zooms, uh, chat with other parents, other loved ones. And um, yeah, Kinship, SDA Kinship, if I can turn it the right way here, loves you. So uh, remember to stay hydrated and... Um, yeah, and remember that God loves you unconditionally, just as you are. You're not a sin for being who you are, and uh, you are created, not broken, not needing fixing, uh, just just perfect the way you are. So please okay. connect with Kinship, sdakinship.org, and if you have any questions for me or I can uh, forward them on to uh, John and Carolyn, just email me, info at sdakinship.org, and John has one closing comment. I just the agreeing. Oh, agreeing. oh, an agreement. Thank you. Families are not alone either. Thank you. Thank you so much. Everyone have a great rest of the week, and we'll see you next Tuesday for a new episode of Tuesdays with Ted. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>